Assalamu alaikum and welcome to lecture number 30 for the course Corporate Social Responsibility NGT 610. My smile is going to tell you that we're nearing the end of our course and the book and the uh, chapter as well. Uh, we are doing chapter number 7 which is about sustainability and its challenges. The outline for the or the learning objectives for the uh, chapter is or the outcomes that we expect that you will have once you're done with the chapter is to understand capitalism and the relationship between capitalism and sustainability to understand the efforts to measure sustainability and to know the difficulties faced in the implementation of measurement framework so this is the slide which tells you about the learning outcomes and what you are supposed to learn at the end of this chapter. Now, in the last lecture, we were discussing ISO 26000, which was one of the ways uh, to integrate corporate social responsibility or corporate responsibility uh, into the organization. The second way through which you can integrate CR into the organization is by using a triple bottom line approach or a 3BL approach or a TBL approach, as some people might call it. The phrase, the triple bottom line, was first coined in the year 1994 by John Ellington, the founder of a British consultancy called Sustainability. His argument was that companies should be prepared, should be preparing three different and quite separate bottom lines. So he basically said that any organization, big, small, multinational, national, should be preparing three different statements and should be preparing three different bottom lines. Now, what are those three different bottom lines? One is a traditional measure of corporate profit, the bottom line of the profit and loss account. So one is a profit bottom line, which is going to show if the company was profitable or not, which is going to show if the company was able to earn money or if the company incurred losses. So that is what the uh, profit bottom line is. The second is the bottom line of a company's people account which is a measure in some shape or form of how socially responsible an organization has been throughout its operation. So the second bottom line is of the people's account to see that your so social performance organization ki, wo kaisi hai, how good or how bad the social performance of the company was. The third is the bottom line of the company's planet's account, a measure of how environmentally responsible the company has been. Now, the triple bottom line approach basically uses the economic performance as a profit bottom line, the social performance as the people's account bottom line, and the environmental performance or the environmental or the planet account bo bottom line. And the, the, the TBL is basically uh, advocating whenever an organization is thinking of its operation and whenever is an organization is judging the uh, efficiency or the performances uh, of its operation, then the organization should keep in mind all three of these bottom lines, which is the profit profit bottom line, the people's bottom line, or the people's account bottom line, or the planet's account's bottom line. The triple bottom line thus consists of three P's, uh, profit, people, and planet. It aims to measure the financial, social, and environmental performances of the corporation over a period of time. Only a company that produces a TBL is taking account the full cost involved in doing business. In some senses, the TBL or the triple bottom line is a particular manifestation of the balanced scorecard. I, I, I hope that if you have performance management, you will have a balanced scorecard. I think most of you would have taken up the course of performance management. Or if you have not then I would want you to have a look at it because perform a balanced scorecard hai, that also takes into account multiple aspects to see that your organization ki performance ko, uh, kaise manage ya kaise measure kiya ja sakta. Behind it lies the same fundamental principles. What you measure is what you get because what you measure is what you are likely to pay attention to. So the basic idea behind the triple bottom line is that when you measure things, only then you are able to pay attention to things because if things are not measured, if things are not measured, for example, if you would know that a particular thing, let's say water ke example, hum pehle bhi chuke hai, if you would know that the water Ek, aapko unlimited quantity mein available, which is never going to finish. Do you know what we will do? We will just put the tap open and never close it. Ke, yaar, kya hai, pani to hamesha, hamesha ke liye. But 
when you think and when you know that no water is a scarce resource water might not be there forever or my future generations ko shayad pani na mile then you automatically aap uski measurement mein aata hai ki pani ki itni quantity available hai and once you measure it and once you know the quantity then automatically aapko ye realization bhi aana shuru ho jati hai that you're supposed to use it in a responsible manner you're supposed to use it in a manner ke ji aapke future generations ko bhi mile and aap usko waste nahi kar सकते सो बेसिकली द फंडामेंटल प्रिंसिपल इज कि जी अगर आपने किसी चीज को अटेंशन देनी है और इफ यू नीड टू पे अटेंशन टू सम थिंग्स टू सम कॉन्सेप्ट टू सम एक्टिविटी यू नीड टू मेजर इट बिकॉज वंस यू आर मेजरिंग इट देन ऑटोमेटिकली आपकी अटेंशन भी उसकी तरफ आ जाती है ऑन दी अदर हैंड जब आप मेजर ही नहीं करेंगे किसी चीज को देन यू विल नॉट बी कंसर्न अबाउट इट और इट विल शो योर लैक ऑफ कंसर्न ना फॉर एग्जाम्पल अगेन हम अगर टी बी एल ही की बात करें प्रॉफिटेबिलिटी तो हम हमेशा से मेजर करते आए हैं सो वी विल नॉट बी so we will not be talking about it on the other hand uh, when you talk about environmental and social performance if you are not measuring it not see kg how much the organization is giving to the society and how much is the society giving back to the organization if you're not going to do any measurements here then automatically the company will not be concerned about kg uh, the company will not be concerned about the social social performance as well as the environmental performance only when companies measure their social and environmental impact will we have a socially and environmentally responsible organizations so agar aapne judge karna hai ki organization kitni serious hai apne environmental or social performance ke liye all that you need to see is ki is the organization measuring its social performance or environmental performance because if it is then most probably the organization is socially and environmentally responsible and most probably the organization cares about its society and the environment on the other hand agar ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इज नॉट मेजरिंग इट्स सोशल एंड एनवायरमेंटल परफॉर्मेंस एंड इर रिस्पेक्टिव कि वो जो कहे जैसा कहे जैसा करे दैट मीन्स द ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इज नॉट कमिटेड टूवर्ड्स इट्स सोशल एंड द एनवायरमेंटल परफॉर्मेंस नाउ द आइडिया एंजॉयड सम सक्सेस इन द टर्न ऑफ द सेंचुरी ऑफ गेस्ट ऑफ कॉर्पोरेट सोशल रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी क्लाइमेट चेंज एंड फेयर ट्रेड आफ्टर मोर देन द डेकेट इन विच कॉस्ट कस्टिंग हैड बीन द नंबर वन बिजनेस प्रायोरिटी द हिडन सोशल एंड एनवायरमेंटल कॉस्ट ऑफ ट्रांसफर production and services to low cost countries such as china india and brazil became increasingly apparent to western consumers these included such things as the indiscriminate logging of the amazon basin to the excessive use of hydrocarbon and the exploitation of cheap labor so it was because of all these uh, events all these things which happened that आपके ट्रिपल बॉटम लाइन अप्रोच की इम्पोर्टेंस ज़्यादा बढ़ी बिकॉज ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इन द रिक्वेस्ट फॉर गेटिंग अ बेटर प्रॉफिट बॉटम लाइन इन द रिक्वेस्ट फॉर गेटिंग मोर प्रॉफिट्स इन द रिक्वेस्ट फॉर गेटिंग मोर मनी they ignored everything else they ignored the impact of their activities on the society and they also ignored the impact of their activities on the environment and all that they were concerned was ki ji profitability organization ko honi chahiye even if that meant that you going to another country and wahan ki resources exploit kare wahan ki cheap labor exploit kare wahan par aap hydrocarbons ke wahan par because most probably un countries mein jahan par jaakar production kare wahan pe the stringent rules regulations nahi honge aur आप आप ये भी नहीं सोचते कि यू डोंट इवन पुट योर सेल्फ इन द अदर पर्सन शूज इज वेल और आप वहां जाकर सिर्फ इसीलिए ऑपरेशन करते हैं बिकॉज आप वहां पर ऐसी चीजें जो शायद आप अपनी कंट्री में नहीं कर सकते हैं वो आप दूसरी कंट्री में जाकर कर सकते हैं चाहे वो कार्बन हाइड्रोकार्बन रिलेटेड हो चाहे वो एक्सप्लोटेशन ऑफ ऑफ लेबर हो या और बहुत सारी एग्जाम्पल्स भी आपको आप, आप ले सकते हैं बट अगेन ट्रिपल लाइन की या ट्रिपल बॉटम लाइन की इंपॉर्टेंस इसलिए भी बहुत ज्यादा हो गई बिकॉज एक्सपर्टेशन ऑफ द सोसाइटीज एंड एक्सपर्टेशन ऑफ द एनवायरमेंट वॉज ऑन द राइस एंड देन स्टेक होल्डर स्टार्टेड थिंकिंग कि जी दिस इज नॉट ऑन दिस इज नॉट वट वी वॉन्ट इट्स नॉट ओनली द प्रॉफिट द एनवायरमेंटल परफॉर्मेंस एंड द सोशल परफॉर्मेंस शुड बी मेड एज इम्पॉर्टेंट फॉर द ऑर्गेनाइजेशन एज द Uh, profitability of the organization now the growing awareness of corporate malpractices in these areas forced several companies including nike and tesco to reexamine their sourcing 
policies and to keep a closer eye on the ethical standards of the supplies in places as far apart as Mexico and Bangladesh, where labor markets are unregulated and manufacturers are able to ride roughshod over social and environmental standards. Remember, when we were talking about this chapter, we were talking responsibility ki baat kar rahe humne tha, it is one thing that the organization is corporate responsible and it is another thing that the organization should also ensure that its subsidies, its branches, its licensed uh, branches, its uh, franchises, which are where production uh, capabilities or where their production facilities are, there is also corporate responsibility uh, follow. Ho. Now, when you didn't have a triple bottom line ka concept, you were talking about profitable or financial bottom line, ke jab baat karte the, then these companies, now, the oil companies used to go to places like Vietnam and Bangladesh and Pakistan and, and, try and, and would use the country's law, the country's weak law to their advantage where your malpractices in child labor and in, in, in environmental issues or carbon or sub jaghon par ho rahi thi. So keeping these malpractices in mind, organizations started thinking, the organizations, big organizations like Desk and Nike, they started re-examining their standards, they started re-examining that how is your raw material ki sourcing, how are your uh, suppliers, how are they using it, how are your franchises jo hai, wo ethically working or not working, how are your branch offices working or not working, and automatically aap, aap ki jo, you started thinking in terms or in ways other than the financial bottom line. You said, yes, financial bottom line is important, but since corporate responsibility is also important, we as, as, um, uh, as companies who are sensitive to its environment and the society, we need to think up of other performance standards as well. Sir, financial performance, say, but the environmental performance and the social performance are going to be as important uh, to the performance of the company as is the financial performance. It also encouraged the growth of the fair trade movement which adds its brand to products that have been produced and traded in an environmentally and socially fair way. From small beginnings, the movement has picked up steam in the past five years. Nevertheless, the fair trade movement is still only small, focused essentially on coffee, tea, bananas and cotton and accounting for less than 0.2% of all UK grocery sales in 2006. So basically the slide basically shows you what way or how have organizations moved from a single bottom line concept to a triple bottom line concept. Understanding that the triple bottom line concept is for environment ke liye extremely important. In today's environment, in today's globalized environment, in today's competitive environment, to survive, where your stakeholder is knowledgeable, where your stakeholder is conscious, and where your stakeholder is sensitive to the environment and to the social issues, today's organization, today's environment, to survive, can't survive a single bottom line. Pe depend nahi kar sakti. The organization needs needs to assess the implication of its social activities and social performance and it needs to monitor its environmental activities and environmental performance because both of these performances have a very strong impact, have a very important impact on the overall uh, performance of the company. Now, triple bottom line ka concept is very easy. You have seen financials, bhi dekhi, aapne social performance and you have seen environmental performance and you have seen the three of them and you have seen the three of them and the organizational performance. Mein dal diya. But the problem is that you can measure financial pro, uh, performance ko quantitatively. Measure kar sakte this was the amount of revenues. It was your sales, it was your revenue, it was your expenses. Se, revenue with expenses ko minus karenge, simply to your profit or loss. Aa it's easy, it's, it's quantitative. Asani se. On the other hand, when you talk about your social performance, how do you think you will measure it? Aapki activities ka environmental impact kya tha? Let's say that um, uh, environment ki baat karte hai, social ki baat karte hai. Let's say ki aapki organization kehti hai ki ji humne uh, polythene bags use karna chhod de because we are very conscious about the environment and humne paper bags pack, paper bags mein ya papers ke through packaging shuru kar de. Very good. But ye to pata chal jayega ki polythene se paper mein convert karne ke liye expenses kitne huye. But what about how will you know ki ji jab aapne paper पर कन्वर्ट किया तो आप आपको एनवायरनमेंट को क्या फायदा हुआ या एनवायरमेंटल इश्यूज कितने कम हुए या जो एनवायरमेंटल डिग्रेडेशन कम हुई है या जो लैंड पोल्यूशन जो है वो कम हुई है 
اس سے وہ کس ایسپیکٹ تک کم ہوئی بکوز جتنا آپ نے انوائرمنٹ کو سیف کیا بائی یور ڈیسیشن آف کنورٹنگ فرم پولیتن تو پیپر بیکس آپ اس کو کیسے کونٹیفائی کریں گے سیمیلرلی جب آپ سوشل پرفارمنس کی بات کرتے ہیں that say that you said you had schools you made schools your organization made schools جہاں پر آپ انڈر پریبلیٹ چلڈرن کو تعلیم دیتے ہیں ٹھیک ہو گیا آپ کو ایکسپنسز تو پتا چل جائیں گے کہ جی سکول بیلڈنگ میں ٹیچرز کی ہائرنگ میں بچوں کی بکس میں سٹوڈنز کے یونیفارم میں کتنا پیسہ یوز کیا but then once a child gets educated will you be able to know the value of your contribution to the society آپ کو کیا پتا چل سکتا ہے in quantitative terms in many terms no it becomes extremely difficult for companies for organizations for enterprises to find out کہ ان کے جو social performance ہے یا ان کی environmental performance ہے اس کو کیسے measure کیا جا سکتا ہے it becomes extremely difficult for them and that is what this slide is about one problem with the triple bottom line is that the three separate accounts cannot easily be added up it's not 2 plus 2 plus 2 is equal to 6 آپ کو first 2 تو مل جاتا ہے لیکن remaining 2's جو ہیں ان کو ڈھونڈنے میں مشکل ہوتی ہے it is difficult to measure the planet and the people's account in the same terms as profit that is in terms of cash profit کو تو آپ cash میں money terms میں quantitative terms میں measure کر سکتے ہیں لیکن people's account کو اور planet's account کو measure کرنے میں آپ کو issues آ سکتے ہیں the full cost of an oil tank spillage for example is probably immeasurable in monetary terms so اگر کوئی tanker جا کر کسی Arabian Sea میں oil spill ہو جاتا ہے وہاں پہ آپ کی ecosystem پہ کتنا effect ہوا اور آپ کی sea life پہ کتنا effect ہوا اور آپ کی sea plants جو plants ہیں sea plants جو ہیں ان پہ کتنا effect ہوا how will you be able to measure all that in monetary terms it's I don't know if it is, I can't say that impossible to shayad nahi hoga, lekin it is extremely difficult. It's almost impossible, you just can't measure it. As is the cost of displacing whole communities to clear forest, or the cost of depriving children of their freedom to learn in order to make them work at a young age. So the child labor ki cost hai, ya displacing communities ki cost hai, ya jo oil spillage ki cost hai, how will you, how are you able to evaluate these costs in measure? terms how are you able to evaluate these costs in terms of money آپ نے communities displaced کی آپ نے forests ختم کی آپ نے animals کو displaced کی آپ کو کیسے پتا آپ نے آپ نے child labor promote کر رہے ہیں آپ آپ education institutes نہیں کھول رہے ہیں آپ کو کیسے پتا کہ آپ کی کیا cost and that is why the people's account and the planet account which make up the other two bottom line in the triple bottom line approach are very difficult to measure in quantitative terms now is measurement can make a multiple that he can people are still thinking about it they're still finding ways to see gap in Tino bottom line so case it consolidate karke organization key performance go find out car sakte hai us make a defa one of the approaches that is being used as kg our planet account or people's account go despite the fact that it is very difficult it's extremely almost impossible you still try ke aap monetary value de apne apne people's account ko bhi or apne planet's account ko bhi jab dono ko monetary value mil jayegi to automatically the it can be added up to the profitability bottom line to judge the overall performance of the company the other way of finding it or the other way of judging judging or measuring the people's account and the planet's account is through an index something like jo humne security indexes ki baat ki thi jo ki rating system ke liye use karte hain آپ انڈیکسز لاتے ہیں آپ کامن ویریبلز لاتے ہیں آپ تھرو انڈیکس آپ جج کرتے ہیں کہ کمپنی کی سوشل پرفارمنس کیسی ہے کمپنی کی انوائیمنٹل پرفارمنس کیسی ہے اور پھر آپ پیپلز اکاؤنٹ اور پلانٹ اکاؤنٹ کے بارے میں بات کرتے ہیں تو اسی کے ہاو کے دیو مینجڈ ہیں ارسپیکٹیو کے ملٹپل طریقے لوگ فائنڈ کر رہے ہیں but there's still no hard and fast one way through which you can amalgamate or combine the profit account and the people's account and the planet account so that you can judge, evaluate and monitor the performance of the company. So more work has to be done here whereby you need to see کہ آپ تینوں bottom lines کو کیسے add up کرتے ہیں. You need to find ways to measure the people's account and the planet's account in a way that it adds up to the profit account so that the company uh, knows or judges its performance in terms of the economic performance in terms of its social performance and also in terms of its environmental performance now the third way through which you can uh, integrate uh, 
corporate social responsibility within your organization is through a triple loop learning. Now, triple loop learning, to explain, karne se pehle, I've just given you this because every organization that you see or, or have interacted with, wo ek learning process se guzarti hai. Um, learning organizations ki aapne baat, aapne zarur, I'm sure you've studied the concept in your bachelor's, ki what are learning organizations and how do they work. Now, whenever an organization is learning, it can either use a second single loop learning or a double loop learning or a triple loop learning, right? Now let's just, we're going to study all three loops in detail in the next three slides, but just, let's just look at this and see how this works and then we will study individually bhi padenge, and then come back to the same slide and we will us, discuss this and especially with reference to uh, integrating corporate social responsibility within an organization. Now whenever you're talking of learning organizations, there are certain organizations which re result a jate hai, jab kaam ho jata hai, then they see kya kya issues se, kya problems se, kya gaps in between the results and the standards and then wo apne actions ko rectify karte hai. So, aap this, aap, because again, aap jab learning ki baat karenge aur aap results ki baat karenge aap apne results ko ek particular standard se compare kar rahe honge automatically right now jab results or standards mein results or plan mein gaps aayenge then you will say ki acha what did we do wrong now single loop learning is that you ask yourself this question are we doing things right and if your answer is no then you will just study or analyze or monitor your actions and your behaviors to see ki acha hamara kaun sa action tha which is not in the right way, which is not in the right way, our results are not in the right way. So that is what a single loop learning is. The double loop learning is when you ask yourself the question, are we doing the right things? Perhaps if you go to single loop learning or double loop learning, then you don't see the actions only. You see the assumptions also. That we have seen this action, we have seen this situation or this environment. We have seen this action because we thought that the conditions are going to be like this. And since the conditions were like this, that is why we took this action. So in the double loop learning, what the organization does is it goes back to its conditions, sees and analyzing its conditions, say, kya conditions yehi thi, kya humne conditions ko analyze sahi tarike se kiya ya nahi kiya, aur agar analyze sahi tarike se kiya, toh phir kya masle te, aur agar galat tarike se kiya, toh humne kiyo galat tarike se kiya. So, the question is that you ask yourself, are we doing the things right? Kya hum sahi cheeze kar rahe ya nahi kar rahe? Because agar hum, hum, my, humari cheeze hi, assumptions hi sahi nahi hai, conditions hi sahi nahi hai, toh automatically actions bhi sahi nahi honge, and automatically aapke results bhi sahi nahi honge. Uh, double loop learning se better aapki triple loop learning hoti hai whereby you ask yourself the question how do we set, decide what is right and the triple loop learning is going to talk about the context and the basis and the foundation of doing things ke bhai agar hum ye kaam kyu kar rahe to essentially iska purpose kya hai what is the reason for doing this thing agar aapka context scope aapka jo purpose clear hoga sahi hoga to automatically aapki conditions or assumptions bhi sahi hongi aapke actions be saying hunger aapke results be saying hunger now if you compare all these three types of learning single loop learning maps if actions could take the hand and the chances that you will make the same mistakes automatically increase double loop learning may up single set of hater hand like and you're just looking at the assumptions and the conditions are continuously changing to up go up or we must lay us at the you can jump up up in a context k ki site per a context k level per a scope k level per a values because your foundation k level per up me correction car let a up now up go streamline कर लेते हैं अपने आप को सही कर लेते हैं then that is the best type of learning because when you learn in that manner then that means that your system your organization your process will not face the same kind of problem all over again हाँ problems तो आती रहेंगी results तो different different होते रहेंगे लेकिन जो आपने problem solve की है by using the triple loop learning by understanding the context the context, the scope, the foundation, yeah, in, in could change karke job the problem solve kiya. The chances are that that particular problem will never resurface again because aapne foundation ke hi basis par, foundation ke hi level par problem ko eliminate kar diya hai or cheese ko theek kar diya hai. So let's just discuss or study ke ji single, double or triple loop learning actually kya hai and then we will come back to the same slide and show you the uh, pictures taki aap usko relate kar sake. 
the single loop learning assumes that the problem and their solutions are close to each other in time and space. In this form of learning, we are primarily considering our actions. Small changes are made to specific practices or behavior based on what has or has not worked in the past. This involves doing things better without necessarily examining or challenging our underlying beliefs and assumptions. The goal is improvement and fixes that often take the form of procedures or rules. Single loop learning leads to making minor fixes or adjustments like using a thermostat to regulate temperature. So that is what your single loop learning is. Let's say that you your organization and you are your organization mein, uh, log late aare hai. so automatically you put a system uh, uh, thumb impression that when you come you have to thumb impression and you have to make a rule bana de, anybody who is going to come let him ki one day ki salary jo hai, wo cut le, kar lenge. This is what we call as a single loop learning whereby you see the results ko or actions ko ya problems ko and sirf solutions ko dekhte ki acha problem ye isko aise resolve kar do dusri problem aayegi isko aise resolve kar do and then you're looking at the short term solutions of the problem you want to resolve the problem for that time only aap usko long term solution ke bare mein nahi dekhte aap ye nahi dekhte ki us problem ke piche assumptions kya hain aur us problem ke piche aapki what are the various beliefs which are the problems that originate. So that is what we call as a single loop learning. Double loop learning leads to insights about why a solution works. In this form of learning, we are considering our actions in the framework of our operating assumptions. This is a level of process analysis where people become observers of themselves, asking where, what is going on here. So that is the point in time when you double loop learning when you ask this question to yourself that what is going on here, kya ho rai, kaise ho rai, kyun ho rai, what are the assumptions, what are the conditions, what are the situations under which you are taking, uh, active, under which you are doing activities or under which you are taking decisions. Uh, so you ask yourself the questions, what is going on here, what are the patterns, we need this insight to understand the pattern. We change the way we make decisions and deepen understanding of our assumptions. Double loop learning works with major fixes or changes like redesigning an organization function or structuring. So, when you double loop learning, you basically have the assumptions, conditions or situations ko dekhte ki, what is prompting people to behave in a certain manner. And you have conditions, situations ko dekhkar, unko rectify karne ki koshish karte hain. organizational structure ko change karne ki koshish karte hain. Aap organizations functions ko change karne ki koshish karte hain so that the problem is resolved and so that the uh, organization works in an effective and in an efficient manner. The triple loop learning, which we are studying, involves principles. The learning goes beyond insight and patterns to context. The result creates a shift in understanding our context or point of view. We produce new commitments and ways of learning. This form of learning challenges us to understand how problems and solutions are related, even when separated widely by time and space. It also challenges us to understand how our previous actions created the conditions that led to our current problems. This is extremely important because it is basically jo Har cheez, especially organization, mein, even an individual in our lives as well, is interconnected. What we do is our current problems ko affect our current conditions ko bhi affect karta hai, aur problems ko bhi affect our problems. The relationship between the organizational structure and behavior is fundamentally changed because the organization learns how to learn. The result of this learning includes enhancing ways to comprehend and change our purpose, developing better understanding of how to respond to our environment, and deepening our comprehension of why we chose to do things. Now, before I explain to you what this is, let's just give you an example. There's a, there's a kid and he steals, right? Agar aap uski stealing ko khatam karana chahte hai, so single loop learning pa chayenge to aap kenge ke ji, usne steal kiya, aapne usko ek din ka khana nahi diya because you, you, you steal, we're not going to give you food. So what you're doing is, ki aapne uske, us, usko immediate remedy kar di problem ki. However, the chances are that he will not do it one day, two days, three days, four days, when you will get to eat it, he will go back to stealing. 
ना वैन यू आर गोइंग फॉर डबल लूप दैन यू लुक अच्छा कि कंडीशन क्या हैं शायद वो बहुत गरीब माँ बाप का बच्चा है उसके घर में खाना नहीं है उसके घर में और फैमिली मेम्बर्स भी हैं या उसको कम खाना मिलता है सो दो ज्यादा तो कंडीशन जब आप डबल लूप लर्निंग पर जाएंगे तो आप क्या करते हैं कि जी आप उसके घर जाएंगे आप उसके माँ बाप से बात करेंगे उनको बताएंगे कि जी उनका बच्चा जो है वो स्टील करता है चोरी करता है उनके घर में थोड़े से पैसे दे देंगे कि जी अपने हालात बेहतर कर दीजिए ताकि चीज़ें जो हैं वो इम्प्रूव हो जाएं और बच्चा जो है वो आपका स्टील ला कर दिस इज डबल लूप लर्निंग बट वैन यू गो फॉर अ ट्रिपल लूप लर्निंग वट यू डूइंग इज यू टॉकिंग विद द किड एंड यू मेकिंग हिम अंडरस्टैंड कि स्टीलिंग इज रॉन्ग रिलीजियसली भी और पर्सनली भी आप उसके मॉरल्स को आप उसके वैल्यूज को आप उनके एथिकल स्टैंडर्ड्स को चेंज करेंगे आप उसको एजुकेशन की तरफ लेकर आएंगे ताकि एनलाइटमेंट ऑफ द माइंड हो ताकि उसको पता चले कि वो जो एक्शन कर रहा था वो गलत एक्शन है चाहे उसके पास पैसा हो या ना हो चाहे उसके घर में खाना पके या ना पके वट एवर द स्टांस वट एवर द सर्कमस्टांसिस द पर्सन और एनी इंडिविजुअल शुड नॉट स्टील एंड दैट इज वट इज ट्रिपल लूप लर्निंग जस्ट इमेजिन के जब भी मैंने आपको एग्जाम्पल दी अगर आप अगर आप इन तीनों लर्निंग से एग्जाम्पल है विच learning do you think is going to be the most effective in the example that i just quoted you most probably the triple loop learning because when the individual and the kid will himself realize it here ke jo main kaam kar raha hu wo galat hai वो मॉरली भी गलत है वो एथिकली भी गलत है वो रिलीजियसली भी गलत है देन मोस्ट प्रॉबेबली के वट एवर द सर्कमस्टांस इज गुड और बैड दैट ही वुड फेस इन द फ्यूचर दैट पर्सन विल नॉट स्टील ऑन दी अदर हैंड अगर आप सिर्फ कंडीशन को चेंज कर लें तब भी स्टीलिंग रिएकर हो सकती है और अगर आप सिर्फ उसको पनिशमेंट्स दे दें तब भी स्टीलिंग uh, जो है वो रीअकर हो सकती है सो वेन एवर आई टॉक ऑफ ट्रिपल लूप लर्निंग इट इज गोइंग टू बेसिकली इन्वॉल्व कि आप वैल्यूज को चेंज करें नाउ लुक एट दिस पर्टिकुलर डायग्राम एंड सी हाउ थिंग्स वर्क अगेन सिर्फ एक्शंस को चेंज करना इम्पॉर्टेंट नहीं है सिर्फ एग्जाम्पन्स को चेंज करना इम्पॉर्टेंट नहीं है फॉर फॉर यू टू इंश्योर के लॉन्ग टर्म इंटेग्रेशन हो ऑर्गेनाइजेशन में टू इंश्योर के लॉन्ग टर्म चीज़ें होती रहें ऑर्गेनाइजेशन में फॉर यू टू इंश्योर के जी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन में काम जो है वो सही तरीके से आपको फाउंडेशन वैल्यू फाउंडेशन प्रिंसिपल्स चेंज करने होंगे ना यू कैन आस्क मी दिस क्वेश्चन किए तो हमने आपको मैनेजमेंट का लेक्चर दे दिया एंड वेयर इज इंटीग्रेशन ऑफ कॉर्पोरेट सोशल रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी इन टू दी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन बाई यूजिंग द ट्रिपल लूप लर्निंग दैट इज वट अभी मैंने आपको स्टील के एग्जाम्पल ही जस्ट अप्लाई दैट टू एन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इफ यू गोइंग टू यूज अ सिंगल लूप लर्निंग वाइल इंटीग्रेटिंग कॉर्पोरेट सोशल रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी तो मोस्ट प्रॉब्ली ऑर्गेनाइजेशन आपकी फिलानथ्रोफी कर रही होगी और चैरिटी कर रही होगी अगर आपकी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन डबल लूप लर्निंग यूज करके सी एस आर को इंटीग्रेट करेगी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन में तो फिर क्या होगा कोई अर्थ को एक आएगा सब लोग सोसाइटी के लिए काम करेंगे अर्थ को एक खत्म हो गया चीजें खत्म हो गई ठंड पड़ गई काम ऑर्गेनाइजेशन का खत्म फ्लड आया ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इज गोइंग टू गेयर आप गिव रिसोर्स गिव मनी डू अलॉट फॉर पीपल दो चार महीने के बाद ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इज गोइंग टू स्लीप अगेन बट वेन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन आर गोइंग टू यूज अ ट्रिपल लूप लर्निंग विद रेफरेंस टू इंटीग्रेटिंग कॉर्पोरेट सोशल रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी इन टू द फैब्रिक ऑफ द ऑर्गेनाइजेशन दैन वॉट विल हैपन इज दैट सी एस आर विल बी एम्बेडेड विद इन द वैल्यूज एंड द प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ द ऑर्गेनाइजेशन और जब वैल्यूज और प्रिंसिपल में सी एस आर एम्बेड होगी तो आपकी स्ट्रैटेजी और पॉलिसी मेकिंग में भी सी एस आर आएगी और आपके एक्टिविटीज और आपके बिहेवियर में भी कॉपरेट सोशल रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी आएगी सो वेन एवर एन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन नीड्स टू इनकॉपरेट को क्रॉप incorporate corporate social responsibility or corporate responsibility within itself it has to use a triple learning triple loop learning approach and ensure ke ji jo corporate responsibility initiatives hain ya corporate responsibility principles hain wo aap organization ki foundation mein organization ki core values mein organization ki value foundation mein aur organization ka jo existence ka reason hai uske vision mein uske mission mein uske values mein dale because once you embed it it in all in values and vision and mission then automatically aapki organization chahe jo bhi kaam kare jahan pe bhi located ho uska jo bhi size ho aapki organization is going to be a socially responsible organization so that is what these three things are or again agar humne 
just a small recap here, a mid uh, lecture recap. Agar organization ne uh, CSR ko uh, apne organization mein integrate karna hai, successfully integrate karna hai, then automatically aap ISO 26000 use kar sakte hain, aap uh, triple loop learning use kar sakte hain, or aap uh, triple uh, bottom line ya uh, TBL uh, concepts ko bhi use kar sakte hain. So that is ways of integrating corporate social responsibility within an organization. Now what are we going to do towards the end of this lecture is we're just going to study KG with respect to global corporate social responsibility aapki kya kya cheeze aati hai. Now don't uh, get confused, uh, global CSR is yes is your ninth uh, chapter jo hai wo aapka global CSR ke baare mein hai. Lekin chapter ko mein agle lecture mein discuss karungi which is going to be our second last lecture and abhi hum sirf ek generally hum discuss karein ke jab aap uh, corporate social responsibility and global corporate social responsibility ki baat karte hain to wo kaun kaun si cheeze hain again uh, the, all the slides jo ke aap is point onwards se dekhenge they are not the information is not there in the book but you will get handouts and aapke paas mere lectures honge to understand what I am trying to say. Although the concept has been developed, that means although the concept of corporate social responsibility has been developed since the early 1970s, there is no singly commonly accepted definition of corporate social responsibility. There are different perceptions of the concept among the private sector, the government and the civil society uh, organization. Now this is what we discussed really early. Although we have WBCSD ki definition, di thi, but still aapke European Union ki corporate social responsibility ki definition lagati hai, kisi or organization ki corporate social responsibility ki definition alakati hai. Governments are going to define uh, the concept in a different way. The civil society is going to define this, uh, it in a different way. So despite KG 1970 may concept juthav usne importance le li thi, still you cannot find that one perfect good definition. Good to shut up bhoat jagah mele. But one definition jaha pa sab log agree kar sake. Depending upon the perspective, depending upon ki kon corporate responsibility ko kis jagha se dekh raha hai, kis angle se dekh raha hai. CSR may cover a company is running its business responsibility in relation to internal stakeholders. CSR might include KG uh, organizations ke liye. For some organizations, CSR is only KG you should have or you should behave responsibility towards your internal stakeholders. This might be shareholders, employees, customers and suppliers. The second perspective of corporate social responsibility is the role of businesses in relationship to the state, locally and nationally, as well as to the interstate institution or standard. So that's the second perspective perspective of what corporate social responsibility can be. The third is business performance as a responsible member of the society in which it operates and the global community. So this one is a more comprehensive uh, definition or a more comprehensive perspective of corporate res social responsibility which is business performance as a responsible member of the society in which it operates and also the global community. So depending upon ki aap kis angle se, kis tarikhe se corporate responsibility or corporate social responsibility ko dekh rahe hain, aapki, aapka jo perspective hai, that can sort of give you a different definition of corporate social responsibility. So far, there have been over 300 CSR codes, principles, performance standards, management standards developed by governments, businesses associa associations or academia, not mentioning a huge number of individual companies, codes of conduct or reporting initiatives. So, agar aap abhi ki baat karte hain, there have been more than 300 CSR codes, guidelines, uh, performance standards jo ke companies follow karte hain. And these 300 do not include codes that have been developed by individual companies like Infosys or Tata or Philips. So, now, I'm continuously saying that organizations have to customize their own concept of corporate responsibility. But having said that, customization is only possible when you have a basic framework in place. Ho. Right? Let's say that you're going to uh, shop to buy a suit. There will be a lot of suits. 
آپ جب ان میں سے کوئی ایک پک کریں گے چوز کریں گے پہنیں گے تب ہی اس کو کسٹمائز کر سکتے ہیں تب ہی اس کی میجرمنٹس ٹھیک کر سکتے ہیں اگر وہاں پہ کوئی سوٹس ہی نہیں ہوں گے تو آپ کسٹمائز کس چیز کو کریں گے تو سیم تنگ اپلائیس تو آرگنائزیشنز اس ویل تو آرگنائزیشنز گورنمنٹس آل سٹیک ہولڈرز جو ہم ملٹی سٹیک ہولڈرز اپروچ کی بات کرتے ہیں آل سٹیک ہولڈرز بلونگ تو ویریس فیرز آف لائف ون دے نیڈ تو ہاف بیسک فریم ورک آف کارپرٹ سوشل رسپانسبلیٹی جہاں پر آپ کا انٹرنیشنل کنسنسس ہونا چاہیے اور ہو بھی گیا ہے اور دن بیسٹ آن دیٹ basic framework then companies and organizations and enterprises and even governments can then customize that basic framework with respect to their own needs and with respect to, to their own wants. The richness of approaches creates confusions among businesses, governments or consumers. However, a closer collaboration of initiatives addressing a specific aspect of the implementation of the CSR agenda, which is what has to be done, کوٹس کیا ہونے چاہیے ہیں سٹینڈرز کیا ہونے چاہیے ہیں پرنسپلز کیا ہونے چاہیے ہیں ہاو ایز ایٹو بی ڈن مانجمنٹ اینڈ اشورن سٹینڈرز کیسے ہونے چاہیے ہیں اینڈ ہاو ٹو میجر پروگرس رپورٹنگ اینڈ کنٹرولنگ کیسے ہونے چاہیے اور نہ گلوبل سکیل کود لیڈ ٹو ایمرجنس آف دا گلوبل کامنلی ایکسپٹڈ سی ایس آر فریم ورک سو جو ہم بات کرتے ہیں کنفیوژن ابھی بھی وہیں پر باقی ہے جو میں نے ابھی آپ کو سوٹس کی اگزامپل دی یو نیڈ ٹو ہیو سوٹس سو دیٹ یو کین customize them according to your measurements. You need to have a common CSR framework so that then the organizations can customize that basic framework according to their own needs and according to their own wants. So what needs to be done is, one, you need to have codes and standards. Two, you need to have a, f a, a, a process, a system in place so that those codes and standards can be implemented. And once implementation has been done, you need to to have a measurement tool. You need to have a reporting tool to see ki performance or results kaise te. Did we achieve what we wanted to achieve? Ya gaps kitni hai, variations kitni hai, deviations kitni hai. So the international consensus has to be developed on quotes, on systems and on reporting. And once uh, consensus has been developed on these three areas, in these three categories, then in three categories, co organizations jo hai, accordingly adopt kar sakti hai, or accordingly usko use kar sakti hai. Now, a growing number of companies in a wide range of sectors and geographic regions have discovered concrete value and competitive advantage from taking environmental initiatives. For example, in areas such as pollution prevention, energy efficiency, environmentally oriented design, supply chain management and industrial ecology. So keeping in mind that organizations ki ke liye unki environmental, uh, environmental performance is extremely important for the organizations. What the organizations are doing is they are creating competitive advantage and they're adding value and adding concrete value to initiatives such as the environmental initiative, such as the pollution prevention initiative, energy efficiency, environmentally oriented design. Even when you talk about the house, you also design the house that the environment will not خراب نہ کریں یا پلوٹ نہ کریں and supply chain management and industrial ecology for instant cement production requires intensive use of natural raw materials and energy it also results in emission to the atmosphere the most significant being carbon dioxide that is why eco efficiency is at the core of St. Lawrence cement business producing more cement while using fewer resources and producing less waste and pollution per ton so just an example this is just a business example this is a company St. Lawrence business cement business it's a company and keeping in mind KG or, or, or accepting the fact that the environmental performance is an extremely important performance for an organization what this company has done is it is ensuring KG when it's producing cement it's not harming the environment and it's not harming the uh, uh, atmosphere and it's doing it by being eco-friendly and it's doing it by ensuring that the eco-efficiency is the ecosystem efficiency hai, wo zyada on high rahe. Another example from another sector, I have a cement industry ki example. Di. The other example is from KPMG. KPMG since 1996 uh, has been actively involved in a range of environmental programs and are currently preparing for the ISO 14001 uh, standardize, standardization. They have integrated all their environmental programs into mainstream operations to provide sustainability. There are five 
key areas where they as a firm are making an environmental impact water waste paper energy and transport savings made by the environmental management programs currently stand at 250000 per year by switching to greener energy suppliers energy reduction targets of 30% over 3 years have been built into the overall maintenance contracts and can account for a further 600000 savings so jab hum aapse baat hi karte hain ki ji it doesn't, it doesn't depend on what kind of business or what kind of product or services your organization is giving. It doesn't depend ki aapka business kar kya raha hai ya produce kya kar raha hai. It doesn't matter ki aap kahaan par located hai. It doesn't matter ki aap globally ya locally business kar rahe hai ya aapki organization jo hai wo small or medium hai ya large hai. Irrespective of all these things your organization needs to have a corporately responsible business. Uh, you need, your organization needs to undertake corporate social responsibility initiatives because your company ko fayda isi mein hai. Aur abhi jo aapko KPMG ki example de, you can just see ki company jab social initiatives take up karti hai, it is not about expenses only. It is about saving a lot of money as well. And irrespective of KPMG is a totally different sector. Cement industry is a totally different sector. Irrespective of what you have in which sector or which industry you have to take up corporate social responsibility initiatives. You have to take up corporate responsibility. And you need, to, uh, you need to make yourself feel important about it. You have to embed this concept in your organization mein embed karna hai in values, in uh, visions and in missions that you have. The implementation of CSR initiatives usually differ for each company or even sector. Again, as I said, every company, every sector, every industry which companies work in the एक CSR framework को customize करेंगी अपने मुताबिक CSR rating frameworks को अपने मुताबिक customize करेंगी and even how they or, or the CSR initiatives that these companies take will be different as uh, will be different uh, with respect to the sector and the industry so ये जरूर हो सकता है कि companies in various sectors or various industry different CSR initiatives करें ये भी हो सकता है कि companies working in in different geographical areas different CSR initiatives Maybe a smaller company will undertake a smaller CSR initiative and a bigger company like Nestle or PNG are going to take bigger corporate responsibility initiatives. But initiative lena zaruri hai, but the type of initiative can be different depending upon the number of factors such as the size and the culture. Manufacturing-based companies are confronted by a wide range of environmental challenges, while retail or service sector companies face these to a lesser extent. And that's just an example that sector to sector jo aapki differentiation aati hai, ya sector to sector aap, aap kehte hai ki ji aap different corporate social responsibility initiatives take up kar sakte hai, wo kyu aate hai? Because jo manufacturing sector hoga, uske operations bohat different hai, uske processes bohat different hai, or uske issues, the one that they, that they will be dealing with respect to the internal environment and the external environment, environment will be very different honge, as compared to when you take into account the retail or the service industry. Service industry has its issues, its problems and depending upon what sector, what industry, what location, what size, what country, what culture, what culture, what issues, what country ke issues kya hai, aap ko usi se take up. Karte. Now let's say for a country where education is not a problem, everybody is educated. Do you think that companies, corporations, education as a social initiative take up karenge nahi unko zarurat hi nahi hai but when you come to a country like ours pakistan wahan par yes education provides a very big opportunity ke companies is sector mein kaam kare similarly aapki empowerment aapki aapki poverty alleviation these are the issues where Pakistani companies or multinationals working in Pakistan can take up all these issues with reference to uh, the corporate social responsibility initiatives. Although some companies address environmental issues uh, one facility or department at a time, companies are increasingly integrating the environment into all parts of their operation. That basically means that some companies are addressing environmental What companies do is that companies is consist of a number of departments, right? And what a company does is ke ek department ko dekhti or ek department ko dekhti ke how is that department impacting the environment? And then takes remedial actions or whatever 
with reference to corporate responsibility. So it is the focus is one department at a time. जब एक department हो जाएगा तो फिर दूसरा, फिर दूसरा हो जाएगा तीसरा, and so on and so forth. But what companies today are more and more companies are doing is they're looking at the impact of the environment on the entire organization and vice versa, which is they look at how the entire organization consisting of all the departments is how is it impacting uh, the environment is it a positive impact or is it a negative impact whatever the nature of the commitment most companies follow a similar series of steps when addressing their impact on the environment now what is that series of steps first up is a corporate environmental policy companies committed to reducing their environmental impact usually create a set of environmental principles and standards often including formal goals at minimum most such statements express a company's intention to respect the environment and the design production and distribution of its products and services to commit the company to be in full compliance with all laws and go beyond compliance whenever possible and establish an open book policy whereby employees community members and others can be informed of any potentially adverse effect the company might have on the environment so when we say that the company has to be more environmentally responsible how can a company do that how can a company manage that the company is managing that by creating a corporate environmental policy which is going to be a set of codes a set of guidelines a set of principles a set of regulations that a company has to follow with respect to uh, what are its responsibilities towards the environment the second thing is the environmental audit before a company attempts to reduce its impact on the environment it is essential that it first gains a full understanding of it for most companies this usually involves some kind of environmental audit the goals of the audit is to understand the type and the amount of resources used by a company product line or facility and the type of waste and emissions generated some companies also also try to quantify this data in monetary terms to understand the bottom line impact yahan par aapka jab aap planet account ki baat karte hain to yahan par ye aata hai this also helps to set priorities as to how a company can get the greatest returns on its efforts so basically jab aap environmental audit ki baat karte hain one thing which is important is that an environmental audit has to be done before the environmental policy is implemented because up before and after ka effect dekhna chahte hain so you do first an environmental audit to see what or how are you doing things now with reference to the environment once you've done an audit then you implement the environmental policy and then you're going to do another environmental audit at the end of the year to see ke ji what are the changes or what are the positive impacts that your environmental policy has made and then you can see ke ji pehle kya tha aur ab kya ho raha hai or what sort of uh, advances or what sort of uh, apne performance jo hai wo aapki kaise behtar hui hai as compared to that agar aap environmental audit uh, policy implementation se pehle nahi lenge to aapke paas ek reference नहीं होगा एक स्टैंड आपके पास एक एक चेक पॉइंट नहीं होगा आप अपनी इंप्रूव परफॉर्मेंस को किस चीज से कंपेयर करेंगे to see कि आपने चीज अच्छी कर दी फॉर एग्जांपल लेट्स से दैट आपको आई यू नीड टू गिव अ पेपर आपने एक पेपर पढ़े बगैर दिया बिकॉज यू डोंट हैव टाइम एंड यू स्कोर्ड अ Two out of ten in that. Then you really, 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 really studied and had a lot of hard work here, and you were really focused. And then you gave the paper again, and you scored a ten out of ten. Now, if you would not keep that two out of ten in your mind, or if you would not have that two out of ten paper in your hand, then what two things will happen? One, you have ten out of ten. You will get to have comparison purpose. You will compare it again. आप आप टू आउट ऑफ टेन कह रहे हैं पता नहीं आप सही कह रहे हैं या गलत कह रहे हैं द सेकेंड थिंग इज दैट इंट्रेंसिक फील गुड दैट यूल हैव दैट इंट्रेंसिक गुड फीलिंग दैट यूल हैव के सी आई डिज इट आई इम्प्रूव I proved it to everybody that I could do it is going to be there. The same thing happens in organizations when they will do an internal audit, uh, environmental audit before and after the implementation of the uh, environmental policy to see ke ji kaun se changes hue, kaise changes hue, kis tarike se cheeze behtar hui. And then an environmental audit is not a one time activity. It's it's an activity which has to be uh, carried out on regular basis to see ke organization ke environmental progress jo hai 
वो कहाँ पर जा रही है और कहाँ पर नहीं जा रही है देन अगेन रिमेम्बर जब हमने बात की थी ट्रिपल बॉटम लाइन की कि जी आपको क्वांटिफिकेशन में मसला पड़ता है और मॉनेटरी वैल्यू आप नहीं निकाल सकते पीपल्स अकाउंट की प्लानट अकाउंट की वन यू आर डूइंग एंड इन्वायरमेंटल ऑर्डर इट बिकम्स ईजियर फॉर दी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन टू फाइंड आउट कि उनकी एक्टिविटीज का इन्वायरमेंटल इम्पैक्ट इन टर्म्स ऑफ मॉनिटरी वैल्यू इन टर्म्स ऑफ क्वान्टिटेटिव वैल्यू जो है वो क्या है The third thing is employee involvement. Leadership companies recognize that to be effective, an environmental policy needs to be embraced by employees throughout the organizations. Not just those whose work is related to the environment. To do that, companies engage in a variety of activities, especially education, to help employees understand the environmental impact of their job and to support their efforts to make positive changes. Some companies go further, helping employees become more environmentally responsible throughout their daily lives, helping them build a true environmental ethics. Besides education, many companies create incentives, rewards, and recognition programs for employees. who demonstrate their environmental commitment so that is basically ke ji aap apni employees involvement zaruri hai not just with corporate responsibility not just with environmental performance if an organization ye to aap pehle bhi i'm sure that you've done it if you want your organization if you want policies to succeed if you want strategic uh, strategies to succeed you want your employees commitment similarly agar aap apni environmental performance ko or for that matter uh, social performance um, को बेहतर करना चाहते हैं यू नीड टू इन्वॉल्व योर एम्प्लॉयज यू नीड टू एजुकेट देम टेल देम और शो देम द इम्पोर्टेंस ऑफ वॉट इन्वायरमेंटल परफॉर्मेंस इज और वाई इन्वायरमेंटल और सोशल परफॉर्मेंस इज इम्पॉर्टेंट वंस यू आइडेंटिफाइड और क्लैरिफाइड द इम्पोर्टेंस ऑफ दीज टू इशूज देन यू ऑल्सो नीड टू आस्क देम कि जी अच्छा आपका क्या फीडबैक है वट कैन द कंपनी डू वट शुड द कंपनी डू और जो अभी कंपनी कर रही है हम इसको कैसे इम्प्रूव करा सकते हैं ऑटोमेटिकली वन द वन द पीपल एंड द एम्प्लॉयज आर गोइंग टू बी इन्वॉल्व इन द इन इन मेकिंग बिजनेस इन मेकिंग पॉलिसीज इन मेकिंग स्ट्रैटेजीज दिन ऑटोमेटिकली जो उनके कमिटमेंट लेवल होगा विद इन टर्म्स ऑफ इम्प्लीमेंटिंग दोज पॉलिसीज एंड इम्प्लीमेंटिंग दोज प्लान एंड इम्प्लीमेंटिंग दो स्ट्रैटेजीज दैट इज ऑल्सो दैट विल बी मच हायर ना दट्स वन थिंग कि आप इंडिविजुअल को educate karo regarding the importance of environment and society regarding the importance of the impact of the organization's activities on the environment and society is ye ek aspect hai the other thing is that you need to give incentives and reward people and recognize their effort when they are doing something good because or especially organizations mein agar employees are take or you have 100 employees usme se agar 50 are taking care of the environment and the other 50 are not then you need to make a distinction between them you need to reward and recognize the efforts of those people who are doing something for the environment who are making the environment clean who are upgrading the environment rather than degrading it so bahut zaruri hai ki ek to aap apne employees ko educate get kare that's extremely important and the second thing that you need to do is you really really need to uh, uh, give incentives uh, give rewards and give recognitions to employees who demonstrate their environmental commitment fourth is green procurement to help ensure that the products and processes are environmentally responsible many companies seek to buy greener products and materials from their suppliers Some companies participate in buyers group in which they leverage their collective buying clout to push suppliers to consider alternate products and processes so aapki organizations can push for green procurement whereby ensuring that their raw material is ethically uh, extracted is is et- extracted keeping in mind uh, the responsible business practices the fourth thing is green products or the fifth thing rather is the green products products themselves may be made more environmentally friendly with regards to for example the control of emission noise reduced health and safety risk and reduced energy requirements एक एक वेबसाइट पर भी आप चले जाएगा विद रेफरेंस टू ग्रीन ग्रीन इंडेक्स होती है द ग्रीन इंडेक्स इज बेसिकली इज अ कलेक्शन इट्स गोइंग टू द ग्रीन इंडेक्स इज गोइंग टू गिव यू the green directory it's, it's also called it's going to give you information about all those companies which 
आर यूजिंग और प्रोड्यूसिंग ग्रीन प्रोडक्ट सो अगर आप एक ऐसे इंडिविजुअल हैज वेरी इन्वायरमेंटली कॉन्शियस एंड यू वॉन्ट टू डू थिंग्स विद इन्वायरमेंट एंड यू ओनली से जी आई विल ओनली बाई प्रोडक्ट्स जो कि ग्रीन प्रोडक्ट्स हैं यू डोंट नो कि कौन सी कंपनी ग्रीन है कौन सी कंपनी ग्रीन नहीं है दैट ग्रीन डायरेक्ट्री और द ग्रीन इंडेक्स विल बी एबल टू आइडेंटिफाई फॉर यू दोज कंपनीज जो कि ऐसी हैं जो कि ग्रीन प्रोडक्ट्स प्रोड्यूस करती हैं Additionally, as more and more companies and their stakeholders are attracted to CSR initiatives, but are often uncertain as to what steps may create an ad. may create an adequate environment for putting the con concept into operation three such steps could assist in facilitating the process first promote dialogue among stakeholders so communication among stakeholders is extremely important create the actual partnership necessary for bringing voluntary initiatives to fruition and agree on a systematic and monitorable program for establishing and financing voluntary initiatives so when you want your companies or uh, and when you want more and more companies to be attracted and we want when you want more and more companies and more and more stakeholders to be attracted towards corporate responsibility initiatives it is important ke ye teen steps jo ke humne aapko idhar bataye ye sare implement kiye jaye so that aapki jo importance hai corporate responsibility ke importance that is advertise and promote did far and wide so that everybody understands the concept uh with this i'm going to end my lecture number 30th and i'm also going to give you a quick recap before i talk about the slide that you're seeing in front of you what we've done so far is we've talked about okay up what are the ways through which you can integrate corporate social responsibility within the organization and in this respect we've talked about iso 26000 we've talked about the triple bottom line why is it important what is it and what are the what is the downside of it and we also and we have also talked about the triple loop learning in detail as well then i just gave you or we just discussed ke you up ग्लोबल सी एस आर की बात करते हैं और स्पेशली विद रेफरेंस टू इन्वायरमेंट तो आप क्या क्या कर सकते हैं स्वयं ने इन्वायरमेंटल ऑडिट की बात की एम्प्लॉयज कमिटमेंट की बात की एंड पॉलिसी एंड गाइडलाइंस की बात की सो दैट इज हाउ वी आर गोइंग टू फिनिश आर चैप्टर नंबर सेवन एंड दैट इज ऑलमोस्ट हाउ आई एम गोइंग टू फिनिश माई लेक्चर टूडे ना बिफोर आर गुड बाइज वट आई वॉन्ट यू टू सी एस इज दिस स्लाइड ना वट आई वट आई एम शोइंग यू इज अ लिंक राइट एंड इफ यू कैन यू कैन कॉपी दिस लिंक टू योर सर्च पार एंड आप इसको करेंगे तो आप ऑटोमेटिकली एक वेबसाइट पर जाएंगे जहाँ पर जो द बॉडी शॉप विच इज़ अ बिग कॉस्मेटिक कंपनी द द फाउंडर ऑफ द बॉडी शॉप इज टॉकिंग अबाउट द कॉपरेट रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी इनिशियटिव बिकॉज शी इज़ वन ऑफ द मेजर आर्किटेक्ट द इनिशियल फाउंडर जिसने कॉपरेट रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी के लिए और कॉर्पोरेट सोशल रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी के लिए बहुत ज़्यादा काम किया सो दिस इज जस्ट an interview her talk which will just show you ke ji us unka initiatives with respect to the concept kya hai and it will just give you an insight ke what different people are talking about aur wo kya keh rahe hain corporate responsibility and corporate social responsibility ke uh, bare mein so you can have a look at this i'm going to play it right at the end of this lecture but inshallah when i'm going to meet you next time for the next uh, lecture we're going to start chapter number 9 we're skipping chapter number 8 because it's about the csr practices in india you can have a look at it you can study it study it but it is not a uh, part of our course aap for general knowledge purposes aap usko padh sakte hain when i meet you next time inshallah with the next lecture we're going to start chapter number 9 which is about corporate social responsibility so i am going to say my allah hafiz here corporate social responsibility i don't think it's working i think it's it's been taken over by the big management houses marketing houses it's been taken over by the big groups like KPMG like Arthur Anderson it's a huge money building operation now and and i think maybe it's the word corporate what i when i was part of the architects of this responsibility in business movement that it was so different that was an alternative to the international chamber of commerce it was a traders alliance but it had it had um progressive thinkers and the pro progressive academics it had it had uh, you know um people who were philanthropists it worked alongside startup businesses that were really creative like the body shop then like ben and jerry's that had a social purpose and a lot of the thinking came out of the 60s it came out of the anti-war movement came out from the grassroots movement so much of our thinking was influenced by the the um Scandinavian business practices and so much of my thinking came out because I was learning about 
you know, the Quakers who were extraordinarily good at running a business, but never lied, never cheated, you know, put more money back in to their enterprises than they took out, and had a social purpose. So the, 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 the beginning, the architect for that new thinking, which was really simple, how do you make business kinder? How do you, how do you, how are you embedded in the community? How do you make community a social purpose for business? Things happened, you know, may, I don't think we in that, in that movement, we took our eyes off the ball. We didn't, we were getting to be um, so in love with each other's voice and each other's networking that we didn't see what was going on. We didn't see the whole growth of the glo corporate globalization. We didn't see the immense power that business was playing, especially in the political arena. We didn't look at the language, the economic language, which was about control, which was about, you know, everything had to be for the market economy. We were just flowering around on our own thinking. And so what you opened, we, we took our eyes off the ball and when we put it on the ball again, we thought, you know, it's been hijacked. This, this social responsibility in business and it became corporate social responsibility. And it was a huge money earner for these big management companies like you know, KPMG, like Arthur Anderson, like Price Waterhouse, Coopers, all of those. They were making shed loads of money by actually doing a system of analysis about how you measure your behavior. But it was no good, it was like this obsession for measurement. It wasn't ever showing you how you can put these ideas into practice. And they never told you and meant a truth. A truth that nobody wants to discuss. If it gets in the way of profit, business aren't going to do anything about it. So we still have rapacious, gov uh, rapacious businesses. You still have businesses in bed with governments. You still have governments' inability to measure their greatness by how they look after the weak and the frail. You still have government's only true measurement of success is economic measurement. And you still have businesses that can legitimately kill, can legitimately have you know, boardroom murder, can legitimately have a slave labor economy, so that all of us in the West, primarily in the West, or all, all of us who are wealthy, are guaranteed a standard of living to what we're used to. And then you have the complicity of the media you know, who dumb us down consistently by saying nothing is more important than entertainment nothing, uh, and celebrity. And by the way, you know, you've got to be, keep purchasing. So I think the corporate social responsibility movement has got to have a bit more courage. And I don't think anything will happen until we get the financial institutions to change. And so that we're not measured by this one standard, this unimaginative bottom line, financial bottom line, when we are measured by a financial bottom line that does include human rights and social justice and workers' justice. And if we start listening to the real, the real forerunners on the planet, the environmental movement, the social justice movement, to help shape our thinking, then something will change. But for me, corporate social responsibility in my life, for what it's, I think it's, I don't think it's work. And that's a shame because it's, it's, it's controlled the language and it's hijacked the language.